Hi all, it's PJ with Montevella Sewing Centers. This segment is on hoops. As you can see here, I've got a ton of different hoops. I'm gonna walk you through the different styles. This is just the standard embroidery hoop. This is the kind of hoop that comes with most all embroidery machines. There's a screw, usually at one end. On the larger hoops, there might be screws at both ends. They just tighten and loosen. There's an inner and outer hoop. Uh, one thing to note, because I just put that in wrong. Specifically on the baby lock hoops, there are little arrows here. Those should align. Your hoops may or may not have come with a plastic template. This comes in handy not only to hoop and get hooping accurate, depending on whether you have a camera system or not, but also it shows you your embroidery field. So this is what I consider just a standard hoop. This is what I call a spring hoop or a latch hoop. There is a little latch at one end and on, this is the big baby locker brother hoop and they've added this function. On a lot of the faff and biking hoops, this has always been there. This is to help you unhoop. You would tension your hoop correctly with this closed. And in the hooping section, I do a whole thing on how to pre-tension your hoop. So you would tension your hoop correctly with this closed. You would unhoop after you've tensioned correctly and then completely rehoop again with this closed. And it's only when you go to unhoop that you would want to release this. And it will just make getting this undone much easier. You do not want to have this open crank this down and then close this because you could actually snap your hoop. And I have seen it on the Viking and Faf hoops. Um, I've seen the little parts of this go flying when people have done that. So just use this latch to release it when you're ready to unhoop. This is what I call a clamp hoop. This is for a multi-needle machine, but they have these as well for single needle machines. I just don't happen to have one. If I kind of lean this up, you can see there's a section right here. You would slide your fabric in. These are really designed for borders because as you can see, my fabric will only go so far back here. But then once you have your fabric in place, you just push down and this will clamp into place. This is really generally designed to use for borders. And it's a pretty secure hooping. And then when you're ready to let it go, there's on this one, there's buttons on the side and you just push those and it releases. And then you would just slide this down. That's the clamp hoop. And again, these are available. I know for sure in the Baby Lock and Brothers as it's the border hoop. These are what I call frame only hoops. And Dime just came out with a new series of these. I think there's a five by seven and a six by 10. This actually isn't one of those. This is the base of my Snap Hoop Monster. The biggest difference is on the Snap Hoop Monsters, they've got this felt piece. Do not try to put your sticky stabilizer over this. It will just gum this up. On the frame only hoops, it does not have this part and you would use tacky stabilizer on it and then you could just hoop up. So in reality though, this is my Snap Hoop Monster. And basically this is your metal frame. And then it's got this piece that goes over the top. And it's really pretty darn secure. This is actually a little heavy for this. The important thing is to get these aligned correctly. Here's something that's important to note. Here's my stabilizer. I'm gonna do it this way. And your stabilizer doesn't have to be at the edge. So just make sure that you have the magnet and the frame aligned correctly. To me, these kind of magnet frames are not really intended for 
full blown, completely filled embroidery through the entire hoop type of really dense, heavy embroidery. Really the only thing that's holding this in here are the magnets. And while the magnets are quite strong, it is not the same as using two separate hoops that interlock and actually hold your fabric in place. So just know that. I love these for quilting, they're great. And things that are not overly heavy, um, run line designs are great, partial fill designs. You just don't wanna use anything that's really, really dense because you could get some movement. I also, um, if you're going to use this for hoopless, what's called hoopless embroidery, meaning you're only hooping the stabilizer and not the fabric, I would use your basting stitch as well. This is another type of magnet hoop, and this specific hoop is a Janome hoop with their, I think it's on their 500E and the 15,000 and the 12,000s, I believe. And this is what they call their quilting hoop. And again, here's a, just a little sample. This comes with magnets, and you can see, if I hold this up correctly to the camera, there's a trough in this magnet. When you put the magnet on, it completely covers this rail. So when you hoop with this, it's very secure. And if, once again, if I bring this up here, hopefully the camera can see this. Can you see how the fabric is bent around the rail? So it is actually very secure, even though it is a magnet, because it's going up and over, it's not gonna slide. It's gonna stay secure. There's four magnets that come with this. All right, so this one is specific to the Janome machine. This is the Baby Lock Magnetic Hoop or the Brother Magnetic Sash Ring. It's basically the same hoop. This is available for the Solaris, the Solaris 2, the XP1, the XP2, and then also the multi needle machines, the 6 and the 10 needle. I have um, the exact models listed over on the right hand side in the little note. Here is the first thing that I am going to say about this hoop. This little tool comes with the hoop, and I would say it's very important that you not lose this. So here is what I came up with for keeping track of this. This is just a zip top bag. I'm gonna put my little tool in here, and I'm gonna zip this up. I know this sounds really stupid, but after I spent 10 minutes yesterday looking for this tool, I decided I didn't want to lose it again. So I've made sure this is kind of a long bag. I am just going to attach this with my last magnet, but it's still open at this end so that I can get in here and I can pry this off. I know that sounds kind of silly, but if you ever lose this, you'll be thanking me for that little tip. On to the real purpose for this. This is a magnetic frame, and honestly, this tool is really handy because the magnets are quite strong, and if there isn't fabric in here, they are a little bit difficult to get off. This tool actually just kind of rides in here, and so you can just lift it up. They did a really, really nice job of engineering this hoop. So here's your hoop. Here's your fabric. The way this works is I set the long ones first and there's little arrows here. Those go towards the center. And then you kind of pull from the center and then just let those clamp into place. And the same with the sides. Just start in the center and move to the outside. and you have a nice tight hooping. What makes this particular magnetic frame different than a lot of other magnetic frames is, I will show you here. Can you see how this is V-shaped? When the magnets fit over the top of that, it really traps the fabric well. And because the fabric is going up and over that V and it's being held in place by the magnets, 
the chances of it coming unlodged are really pretty slim. Most magnetic frames are completely flat, which means with enough stitching and push and pull, or technically pull, you can actually move the fabric in the stabilizer between those two flat plates. This, because of that V, it's gonna hold it in there really, really well. So my usual warning about magnetic hoops is to be careful of what you stitch in them, meaning they're not really designed for really dense projects. Honestly, I think with this hoop, you this could almost replace your standard hoop because you're going up and over that edge. So it's a nice, very secure hooping. Okay, so after you've got your big magnets in place, you would just place your small magnets. And you're all hooped up. This is what I call a double-sided hoop. Again, this is for the multi-needle. Uh, but I believe Faf and Viking have, I think they're called the grand hoop. I call them the hula hoop because they're so big. But it will allow you to do, basically, here's half of, this is one embroidery field. This is the second embroidery field from here to here. So it will allow you to double your space. Check with your machine manufacturer and see if you have a double-sided hoop available to you. This next section is all about multi-needle hoops. So if you don't have a multi-needle machine, you can stop watching now. Thanks. Just a small selection of the different hoops that are available for your multi-needle machines. This is just the standard multi-needle hoop for the Baby Lock and Brother. The first thing that I'm going to point out is on most of my hoops, you can see here, I have got a little arrow. Here's the reason for that. And if you have a multi-needle machine, you may have already figured this out. This will go into your arm in either direction. So I just put this here to help me keep track. This becomes important if you are taking your hoop out and then putting it back in say for an applique, if you need to take it out to trim an applique, that becomes important. This is one of my favorite. It's not really a hoop, it's a half of a hoop. This is by Durkee and it's called a freedom ring. And in essence, it is just a really, really, really strong spring. I, don't, I can barely pull that apart. But what's nice about this is that you don't have to worry about tensioning anything. These are set up specifically for your multi-needle hoops and they come in the standard multi-needle hoop sizes. Here's your piece of stabilizer, pretend I had fabric on there. Basically what happens, you can see here, I haven't done anything to that. It takes a little bit of effort, but you just snap it in there and it's you've got perfect tension and you don't have to mess with this at all. And then when you're ready to undo that, you just pull a little spring and it will pop off. So this is the Durkee Freedom Ring. These are the tote bag and purse frames. In essence, what this allows you to do, because there's this big cut in here, it will allow you to hoop up, but take advantage of the free arm. So your bag would hoop into here, but the bottom can come underneath here. These are also really good for doing t-shirts because you can put the arms, you can put, you can put the sleeves here and they'll still attach, but this t-shirt can hang underneath. They're really pretty handy. This is from Fast Frames. This is the seven in one set. There's an arm, so this connects to your machine. And then you have all these different sections that just slide in here. You undo this little screw. And then you can tighten this guy up. These work with tacky stabilizer, but you can also use them So pretend this is the fabric that I want to hoop up. So here's my fabric. 
you can also get this little guy, which is called a clam clip dispenser, and it feeds out these little clips. And they're reusable. If you aren't gonna use tacky stabilizer, you can just fold up the edge. and use the little clamp to hold it in place. And you would do this. A couple of sides. And down here, I would just trim my stabilizer away. And then these just reload into the back of this. Montevilla can order all of this from Fast Frames. So these are really handy. They're designed to be used with a tacky stabilizer. But if you don't want to use tacky, you can use the clam clip dispenser. This is a flat frame. It looks really similar to the standard 200 by 300 frame. Here is the standard frame. Here's the big difference. On the flat frame, the connectors are on the outside hoop. Generally, they're on the inside hoop. And here's why this makes a difference. This piece of fabric is hooped up on just the standard hoop. The connectors are on the inside hoop. And I'm gonna show you a still picture of what that looks like on the machine. You can see that all of this is kind of bunched up behind the arm. And this is all, it's just kind of all bunchy. What the flat frame does, and this is the quilt frame, but it's also considered a flat frame because the connectors are on the outside. When you put this into the machine, your fabric is above the arm here and in the back. So it just makes hooping much easier, especially if you're working with really heavy things. It also will help your hoop from coming apart because of the weight of your project. Pretend this was my big frame and pretend this is a horse blanket and it's really heavy. First of all, you should always have your table on uh, to help support that extra weight. But pretend for whatever reason the table wasn't on. Because the arms are on the inside hoop of this, the weight, I'm not sure if I can do this from here, the weight of this can actually dislodge your hoop. With the flat frame, you can't pull it past the arms. So this is the eight by eight quilt hoop and it automatically comes as a flat frame. And you can order the eight by 12 as a flat frame. Also, here's something to note. If you think you're just gonna be clever and you're just gonna swap your arms, from the inside to the outside, not gonna work unfortunately, because if I lay these up here, you can see the flat frame arms are more narrow to accommodate for the fact that they're on the outside, not the inside. It'll throw your machine off if you literally just take these and put them on the other holes. You need to actually get the correct brackets, which come connected to the frame. All right, that's flat frames. And then the round hoops. If you're gonna do a lot of like logo embroidery or apparel, the round hoops I personally think are really the way to go. This comes in a set of three. This is the smallest size and it comes with the C arm. And on the multi-needles, if the hoops need a specific arm, it will be labeled. You get the A and the B with the machine. The C arm comes with this set, and then there's also a set of really small hoops that uses the D arm, and that arm comes with that set. They're sold all together as a set. Okay, so that's it on the multi-needle hoops.